The Food Guide Pyramid Got Turned Upside Down, explained by a nutrition PhD. If you like no bull straight facts, nutrition information, make sure you follow me and share this video. There is a new Food Guide Pyramid out and there is a lot of buzz about it. First of all, let's talk about what they did in the new Food Guide Pyramid and talk about where my biases lie. My research for my PhD was in protein and my research supported the idea that higher protein intakes are beneficial. First off the bat, big fan that they have adjusted the protein intake to no longer be the recommendation of the RDA, which is 0.8 grams per kilogram. Now these intakes are closer to 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight, which is very much in line with the research demonstrating that higher protein diets improve lean body mass, body composition, satiety, and help with weight loss. So I am a big fan that protein is getting its due in the new food guide pyramid. They have also recommended fruits and vegetables. They have also recommended for you to limit your intake of added sugars and added fats. Sounds very similar to the previous food guide pyramid, you know, barring the increase in protein. And the reality is this new food guide pyramid has more similarities than it does differences with the old food guide pyramid. The old food guide pyramid gets blamed a lot for the obesity epidemic and as much as I had some disagreements with the old food guide pyramid, it is not to blame. The old food guide pyramid said limit calories, increase activity, limit oils, saturated fats, limit added sugars, eat lots of fruits and vegetables, eat a lot of fiber. But the one thing it did that people got hooked on was it said the base of it was eat a lot of servings of whole grains. People did eat more starchy carbohydrate, but they didn't do any of the other shit. They ate a lot of calories, the average calorie intake per day, not based on food recall data, which we know is very inaccurate, based on actual quantitative food consumption and waste output data is about 3,500 calories per day. The average physical activity for, the, for an American is less than 20 minutes per day. So no, it's not the fact that people were eating a bunch of whole grains. And oh, by the way, people weren't getting most of their carbohydrates from whole grains. Like, come on. They, they were not eating like whole wheat bread and whole wheat pasta. Like they were eating a lot of refined carbohydrate. They were eating a lot of ultra processed foods, high in refined carbohydrates and sugar, and oh, by the way, saturated fat as well. I don't blame the old food guide pyramid. You could construct a perfectly healthy diet around the old food guide pyramid. It's just that people didn't do it. The new food guide pyramid. I agree with the vast majority of it. I don't even really have a big problem with the emphasis on animal protein. I will say, I think plant protein has benefits. I think animal protein has benefits. So get both, get both, unless you are a vegan or vegetarian for ethical reasons. In that case, obviously you're focusing on plant protein, but they both do have unique benefits. And I think people could do with getting both as long as you're an omnivore. Now, where I disagree, they have said use butter or beef tallow in place of cooking with oils, with plant oils. There is a very well done, very recent study demonstrating very clearly that butter increases the risk of mortality, cardiovascular disease and cancer when substituted for plant oils. And when you substitute plant oils for butter, by the way, regardless of intake or cooking methodology, you have a lower rate of heart disease, cancer, and mortality. So no, I don't agree with telling people to eat more butter. And oddly, they still recommend get less than 10% of your fats from saturated fat. So the saturated fat recommendations are the same, but then they're telling you to use fats that are high in saturated fat, which seems weird and counterintuitive, but hey, oh well. They also put something in there that I might have a more nuanced take than most people. They essentially said, we're not recommending abstaining from alcohol. We're recommending a, a moderation of intake of alcohol because alcohol is how some people connect and there's a mental health crisis and we need other people and we need to spend time around other people. So first off, alcohol is not healthy from a physiological perspective. There is no real safe intake of alcohol. There might be intakes of alcohol that don't have negative effects or much negative effects, but there's no intake of alcohol that's quote unquote healthy. It's not gonna make you healthier. However, I can appreciate the acknowledgement that alcohol is a part of our culture. And if we step back and look at a holistic level, if it helps people, and I again, I would prefer go have friends without alcohol, if you can. But hey, I consume alcohol uh, and I do it a lot of times in the social context. If that's something people enjoy, 
and it gets them out and it's a net positive for their mental health, maybe it does indirectly have an overall benefit. But I think we have to be careful with how we frame it if we're gonna sh on the old food guide pyramid because it recommended increasing intakes of whole grains and people say, some of the criticisms are, well, you can't tell people that because they're just going to eat a lot of refined carbohydrate. Okay, you can't tell people that, but you can tell them alcohol is okay because it's for mental health and they're not going to abuse that, but they abuse carbohydrates. This is a asymmetrical application of logic. Like you can't have it both ways. And I think one of the things I'm really miffed about is that this food guide pyramid or inverted pyramid has been presented to the public as, well, the old food guide pyramid is what made you sick. Uh, no, people didn't follow the old food guide pyramid. They didn't. I'm sorry, they didn't. That didn't make anybody sick. Eating too many calories and not getting off their ass, that's what made people sick. All that to say, I think if you follow the new food guide pyramid, you will be very healthy. I think that overall, you will live a healthy life. If you'd followed the old food guide pyramid, I could say the same thing. Again, I am a big fan of the fact that protein is now prioritized in the new food guide pyramid. I think that's a good thing. And I will say my biases are, my research was sponsored by the National Dairy Council, the Egg Nutrition Board, and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. So if anybody has a bias towards the new pyramid, it's me. But I gotta be honest about the messaging and why I think some of it is kinda bull to be honest.